Hey guys, my name is Josh Smith. I'm the president of Montana Knife Company. Today I'm here to talk to you about how you can field dress a deer or an elk or a bear, or really any other wild game, without the use of a bone saw. Uh, I used to carry actually this particular bone saw and this leather sheath here um, in my pack and, and I don't anymore. And, and let's face it, the difference in the size and weight of a speed goat versus a saw, why would I carry this if I can do everything with this knife right here? So a bone saw is handy to have back at your shop or back at your home. Uh, maybe if you wanna use it in the breakdown butcher process. Uh, but it's absolutely not necessary out in the field. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the breakdown process first before we actually get to the, to the portion about the saw. When you break down your animal, um, and, and unfortunately we don't really, you know, it's mid-July here, we don't have an animal that we can just break down right in front of you here. Uh, maybe we can do that this fall for you guys. But when we do a breakdown of an animal, the first thing we wanna do is have the right gear in our pack. So making sure you have game bags, Garbage bags are nice to have to lay out just to keep things clean. Um, maybe put some of your, your dirty gloves and stuff in when you're done. But I like garbage bags for just laying out on the ground. Gives you a nice big flat clean surface area to then set your game bags on or your quarters on maybe to cool before you put them in the game bags. Rubber gloves, uh, that's just kind of a, a creature comfort. It's kind of nice to wear rubber gloves when you get all done. If you go to put your hunting gloves back on, you're not getting a bunch of that crap in your gloves. Uh, keeps things nice and clean, especially if you have any cuts or anything on your hands, if you're worried about any anything getting into your own bloodstream. Uh, I'm typically not too worried about that. I just wear the rubber gloves just because I like my hands kind of clean when I'm all done. The other things you can carry in your pack for this process, like electrical tape for taping your tag on the carcass when you're done. Uh, some paracord is nice to carry to be able to tie back maybe the legs to a tree, especially if you're doing this by yourself. You might want to open that animal up or pull a leg back and tie it back so you can skin underneath of a quarter while keeping it out of the dirt. So let's get to the actual positioning of the animal. You know, once you shoot an animal, unless it's a huge animal like a moose, you know, when I shot my moose in Canada, it's pretty much in the spot it's going to be. And it was a pain in the ass. And we, we had to get trees out of the way, uh, like our MKC hatchet. I, I would prefer to carry our hatchet over a, over a saw. We could, you can hatchet little trees and stuff out of the way if you need to, some brush to clear your area. If it's an animal like a deer that you can actually move, try and find a spot, maybe it's in the shade that you need to move that animal into uh, if it's really hot out to help cool that meat and keep yourself cool while you're working on the animal. I actually like to position the animal on a little bit of a slope if you can, just as you're starting to open that animal up. Some of that blood and some of that stuff can actually flow away from the, uh, the cavity of the animal where you're working and maybe even flow away from yourself so you're not standing in a mess while you're working on the animal. The other thing that you might think about is uh, building a little fire next to where you're working. If it's winter time and it's cold and your hands are, hands are potentially getting cold while you're working on that, that animal, having a little fire going before you even start off to the side where you can take a pause for a second and warm up. This is supposed to be a super exciting, enjoyable part of the process and take breaks. You guys don't have to crush yourself. You know, take your time. The, 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 the task has been accomplished. You know, you've succeeded. It's super exciting. Don't make this too hard on yourself. You know, I personally have had back surgery. I had a disc discectomy. Uh, you know, bending over for a long period of time in an awkward position is rough on my back and you still have to carry this animal out. So take often breaks, get comfortable, even find a spot to sit down. Just be aware of how long that you're gonna be in that bending position and, and you're gonna have to be maybe holding the leg back yourself or pulling on that hide. So positioning the animal is important. Uh, maybe having a couple little trees nearby that you can tie those legs back and stuff like that like we talked uh, a little bit ago in this film. So now we get to the actual uh, breaking down of the animal. A lot of people, once they split that animal open, like to split the pelvic bone in half. And quite frankly, there's just no need or no reason to do that. In fact, that's just a lot of weight. There's a lot of, of, of bone there and stuff that you don't necessarily need to haul out. So there's a couple different types of methods of gutting a deer. There's actually just gutting which is pulling all the guts out and maybe leaving the hide on and dragging that whole carcass out. 
there's another there's another method where you you gut the deer the same way by splitting it up the middle but then you still quarter that animal out maybe if you have a long ways to go and if it's a big animal like an elk or a moose or something like that you might actually bone out that elk and even cut the leg bones out and not pack the bones out with the quarters the other method is the gutless method uh, I've actually gotten a little better with that. I've learned some things from some guys. I usually wasn't a huge fan of it. I'm not a fan of it if you're not going to get to the tenderloins and get those out. Uh, make sure you reach in and get those tenderloins in by that back rib. Position that animal where those guts are kind of taking the pressure off of the spine. You can kind of roll that animal up, create a little bit of space between the top of that, the, the guts of the, uh, of the deer or the elk, and, and wear those tenderloins out. And make sure you get those tenderloins. It's some of the prime choice meat in a, in a deer or an elk. Now, when it comes to quartering, a lot of people think, well, if you're gonna take quarters off, you have to saw them off, and that's just not true. The front leg of a deer or an elk is actually not connected by any bone at all. It's just tissue. It's very easy to peel off right behind that shoulder blade with a knife. The back legs, the quarters, once you peel that, once you start, uh, once you get that hide skinned off of that, that quarter, you can follow that joint right around the hip and find that knuckle in the hip itself. And there's connective tissue in all of our joints that are holding these things together. Take the tip of your knife and get down in that joint. That ball joint will kind of be exposed. And you just get in there and gently start working and finding those tendons that are connecting that, keeping constant pressure on that leg. And as you do that, it'll peel that joint open. And you can actually hear it as you're popping those joints. Do not get in there and pry and force. You are not going to force that thing apart, even with a heftier knife than like a speed goat, even if you have a super cub. Just take your time and work that leg back and forth and find those joints, and you can cut that entire quarter off without sawing it off. Now, if you want to take the head off to pack out the horns, maybe you're going to do a European mount or, or mount this animal. When you go to the base of the skull, and you cut right around that base of that skull, again, you're gonna get in between the vertebrae, and that head moves. Our heads move just like a deer or an elk. Uh, it is not solid bone. There's connective tissue that, that allows your head to turn back and forth, same with them. Get in those joints between the vertebrae and just find that tissue and, connect, and, and, and cut that with your blade. Uh, we did that with my daughter's elk last year. Uh, we actually used a speed goat knife and we were able to cut that elk in half. Uh, I didn't need to quarter it, but we had to drag it a little ways, and it was too heavy to drag out of that brush on a little north face slope that we were on uh, whole. So we cut that elk in half, and there again, right up behind the back rib, anywhere between those vertebrae, you start getting that knife in there, and those, those vertebrae and our spines are meant to twist and turn, which means they're not solid. There's connective tissue between them. You don't have to saw that stuff in half. So you can get your speed goat or blackfoot knife, stonewall, whatever it is in there and cut that connective tissue. So that's kind of the point here. Uh, I wish I had something that I could kind of demo more of in front of you. Maybe we'll try to do that this fall if we get lucky and we get an animal down. Uh, but I just think that the knowledge itself uh, that you need that you don't necessarily have to carry a saw. You can do it all with a knife. You know, take care of how much you hack away on the bones and stuff like that. Take your time and just use that tip and find those, find those ligaments in there and peel that apart. You don't have to hack away. That's obviously gonna, that's gonna wear on your edge and take that nice razor sharp edge off of your knife. So that's kind of a de uh, description of how you break down an animal without a bone saw. Uh, bone saws are handy to have at, at, at home or maybe in your saddle panniards for trees and stuff like that. I personally would prefer to have a hatchet because I also like to chop kindling um, and, and shave off shavings for starting a fire. And I, I feel like there's more uses behind a hatchet than there is potentially a bone saw. But I hope you guys can get the, uh, you know, get the gist of that through this description and get a chance to put this uh, video to use this fall.